What's up, y'all? Um, I did not plan to do a video for today, but there were so many questions about one of the things that you guys read last week that I figured I better address it in a video real quick. I am currently sitting in our upstairs loft above our garage. Yeah, my, my dog is, is in here as well. All right. For all of you who say that I have an ugly dog, go on, tell him he's ugly. Do it. One of the things that a lot of people were wrestling with last week was in 1 Samuel chapter 16, uh, where it says literally, an evil spirit from the Lord tormented Saul, and everyone's mind proceeded to explode. How can God send an evil spirit? Okay, well, I wanted you to read that, and I wanted you to wrestle with it, because that's what we should do with Scripture. Like, we should wrestle with it. We should... Uh, at times struggle to understand it and that's okay as long as you don't stop wrestling and, and asking questions um, and being confused is all part of being in the word and so I wanted I wanted to just kind of explain that real quick and, and walk you through it and then I'll give you your assignment for today first you have to pay attention to what it says before that line right it actually says now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul now that's the Holy Spirit and then it goes on to say, and an evil spirit from the Lord uh, tormented Saul. Now, it's it's important to know that at this point in Saul's life, he was no longer listening to God. I mean, like, go back and read chapter 15 if you want, right? It's very clear Saul is like a high school student in Bible class. Like, he's just not listening. That was my attempt at roasting you. Can you tell that I missed the classroom? So because of his disobedience, God tells Samuel the prophet to go and anoint a new king. So it's important to understand that just because he has anointed David as the next king, David is not the king yet. He's still just a boy. He's just a kid. None, of, Nobody in the kingdom even knows who he is. Uh, the kingdom has no idea that Samuel has gone and done that, right? It was just something that God... Uh, told Samuel to do symbolically was to anoint David. So, so you still have to keep in mind that David is a nobody from nowhere. I wonder what that's like. <laughs> but it tells us in 1 Samuel 16 verse 13 that whenever Samuel poured the oil on David's head and anointed him, that at that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that moment on powerfully. So there's this direct correlation between the Spirit of the Lord leaving Saul and coming on David and then an evil spirit coming on Saul. See, when God's Spirit goes out of a person, then the devil's Spirit comes in. Look at Jesus' words in Matthew 12, verse 30. Uh, he says, He that is not with me is against me. Jesus said that. Like he said, in other words, no one's neutral. There is no such thing as like, not being for God, but not being against God. Like, no, God draws that line very clearly. He says, you're either for me or against me, right? And so no one is neutral. Everybody has varying degrees of the Holy Spirit or the spirit of the enemy. That's why those of you who read 1 John a week ago uh, wrestled when it talked about the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work in the world and has been for a long time, right? Like it's the spirit of the enemy. And so uh, every every single person is influenced either by the Holy Spirit or by an evil spirit. Uh, that doesn't That's not supposed to freak us out. That's just supposed to let us know how influential the spiritual realm around us is. That's why the Bible tells us that we have to keep in step with the Spirit. In Galatians 5, we have to feed ourselves the Word. We have to stay connected to God and walk with Him because we are living in a world that is heavily influenced by the spiritual realm. We need to walk with the Holy Spirit. And so just because the wording says a spirit from the Lord doesn't mean that like God sitting in heaven calling a demon forward and sending him to Saul. In reality, what it's most likely describing is that when God withdraws his spirit from Saul, now it leaves Saul open and exposed to the spirit of the enemy who is out for all of the souls of man. You see the same thing happen in the story of Job where the devil has to get permission from God in order to come against Job. Nothing is able to touch Job until God gives the devil permission. Um, you even see this in 2 Corinthians 
uh, chapter 12, where Paul literally says this in verses 7 through 10. Uh, this is what Paul says. He says, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, this is what Paul says, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul was saved. And Paul had the Holy Spirit. And yet here is Paul saying, I have this thorn in my flesh. I have the, he calls it a messenger of Satan who's tormenting me. And I asked God to remove it. And God didn't remove it because God says, no, I don't want to, I don't want to remove it from you. I want to work in your life in spite of it. That thing is there to remind you that you need me that my grace is sufficient for you, that I am strong enough to work in you and through you in spite of what you struggle with. And so the reality is God doesn't send it, but he does allow it. And in Paul's case, he allowed it so that his glory would be shown more on the earth. And that's the same case here with Saul, with King Saul, right? So King Saul is now being tormented by this evil spirit because the Holy Spirit is no longer with him. And what does it make him do? It makes him call for some nobody from nowhere to come into his throne room and begin playing him music. And now all of a sudden, David begins to be introduced to the throne. Now he's not the king yet, but this is the way that God is using the situation to get David onto the throne. Look, bottom line is there is a spiritual world around us and it has the ability to impact the world within us, right? And so we need to be aware that there are times where uh, we feel anxious or we feel, feel fearful and that could just very well be the enemy trying to come against us and we need to lean into the Holy Spirit. We need to call on God and we need to know that greater is He that is in us that's the Holy Spirit, that's Jesus Christ, than he that is in the world. That's the enemy, that's the devil. So you just need to keep that in mind as you continue reading on that Saul has been disobedient. He no longer is walking with God. And David is now um, not only walking with God, but he has the anointing of God on his life. So here's your assignment today. I want you to read 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 1 through 37, just that whole chunk. Now, this is going to be the most familiar story to you because you've heard about the story of David and Goliath growing up as a child, but very many of you have actually put your eyes on the scripture and read through the details. So I want you to take some time, read those 37 verses, read the story of David and Goliath, and here's uh, what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to tell me how do you see yourself in David. In this story of David and Goliath, how do you see yourself in him? What, are, what qualities, what characteristics, what attributes about David remind you of yourself? What uh, about that situation maybe reminds you of a situation in your life? Number one, how do you see yourself in David? Give me at least five sentences. How do you see yourself in David? And then question number two is how do you see Jesus in David? In what ways does this story, those 37 verses, point to Jesus Christ in our lives? Okay, once again, five sentences for that as well. All right, I love you guys. I hope you do well. See you later. Bye.